Hey there, how's it going? Great to see you. Now, in this video, we're going to be looking at the Blackmagic ATEM Mini and how to set up a custom RTMP destination. If you have a look at the Blackmagic software control, you can see here that there are a number of preset destinations already set up and configured. We've got Facebook, Twitch, YouTube, of course, Twitter, Periscope, Restream.io, and Vimeo. But what isn't in here is the ability to set up a custom destination. You can't do that through the interface. You've got to go into a settings file underneath the Blackmagic software control, and I'm going to show you how to do that. Now, why would you want to set up a custom RTMP? Well, there are a couple of different reasons. If you're doing something in-house in a studio or in a sports event or something like that, and you've got a custom streaming solution that you might be taking feeds from various things, ATMs being one of them, you might want to premix some cameras on your ATM and feed that through to another streaming server or a large gateway or maybe an internal streaming service if you're running a TV st studio or something like that where you record and push everything through other broadcast means. So what you can do here is set up a custom RTMP stream to an ingestion server in-house, or it could be to another service that just doesn't happen to be configured on the ATEM currently. You can set this up and stream to basically anywhere at all that you want to. And it's ridiculously easy to do. Let's have a look at that right now. So what we want to do is add another item into here, which is going to be a custom RTMP. I'm just going to make one up rather than have a specific one to use. And I'm also going to set up a couple of options. As you can see, some of these here have different options that you can use to send to. Some of them are regional. Some of them, like YouTube, just have a primary and secondary ingest server. And um, Vimeo, for example, here has just the one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the finder on my Mac here and go and look for a file. Now, if I click on my hard drive and then library, then application support, Blackmagic design, and then switches, there is a file in here called streaming.xml. On the PC, the same file exists in a different location. If you have a look in the description down below, I'll put where that location is there for you so you can get to it really easily. I will note though that assumes that you're using the default install, but if you're not, then you should be able to find this file fairly easily on Windows devices anyway. So now I'm going to open up the streaming.xml and it opens up here in a code editor. You can also open this up in a text a normal text editor, but being an XML file and how XML is really fussy about formatting, you've got to have formatting in XML files perfectly correct it's better to do this in a code editor if you've got one available so that you can see that the xml code is still stable when you're doing the edit before you do start what i highly recommend is make a copy of the settings.xml file so that if you do make a mess of this somehow and you're not sure how to repair it you can just restore that from the copy always always make a backup so in this XML file here, you can see that it has a particular structure. This is the same with all XML files. There is a, a, a structure that is required. At the top, you'll see there's this first line that declares that it is an XML file and a first container. Now, an XML file is made up of nested containers. So we have a streaming container that starts here and that container finishes on the last line of the file. Inside that streaming container are three or four service containers. This one starts here and that container finishes here. So you can see how those are set up. Underneath that, there are a whole pile of other containers and, and pieces of data and information. So this is just a, a basic quick look at XML. Don't be frightened about it. it is a very structured thing and it is kind of a programming language kind of thing as well and you do have to make sure you get it right but we've taken a backup so it's safe get in here play around and what we're doing is actually a very simple thing and once you've done this you'll go why was I ever worried about XML this is easy so what we're wanting to do is actually create a new service the service we want to create is not particularly complex so what i'm going to do is jump down here and grab the vimeo service at the bottom it's pretty simple and it doesn't contain too much complexity once again this is exactly the same whether you're doing it on mac or windows so the fact that i'm on mac here doesn't really matter so what i'm going to do is i'm going to select everything that's inside those two tags and i'm going to copy that and i'm going to paste it again after here 
So now I'm going to use this Vimeo service that I've just created a second copy of as a template. So I'm going to just select that and call that custom RTMP. And I'm just going to leave a server name as default. We only want the one server in there. And for profiles, we're going to leave the streaming high, streaming medium and streaming low here. So those are the possible bit rates and things that we can have going out of there. The last thing we need to make sure that we're doing here is to set up the URL for the RTMP service. Now every service has an RTMP URL. This is how you talk to or locate the RTMP server on the internet or on your local network. So it could have a DNS name or it could just have an IP address or something like that. You'll need to figure this out from whatever the RTMP services that you're using. If you're going and using a provided service like a restreaming service or a um, you're working with a company that's going to do a lot of streaming for you, so you need to talk to whoever runs your RTMP server and find out what that address is going to be. It might be a DNS name like a lot of them in here are, or it could be an IP address if it's on your local network and you're not using DNS to address it. And once you've got that RTMP URL, so what I might do is just call this RTMP dot my network slash live and that will do for now note at the beginning of here instead of http or https we use rtmp as the protocol on the url now that we've got this in here all i need to do is to close and save this file and now come back to the atm software control i'm going to close the atm software control and reopen it and when that's relaunched i can have a look at the platform and here we go, we've got the custom RTMP in here. I've got one default server and under quality, I've got streaming high, streaming medium and streaming low, which I left in there the same as the Vimeo one. Now, if you're setting these up to be on a custom broadcast network and you want to make sure that people can't accidentally choose the wrong streaming service because you specifically want it to go to say an in-house restreamer or something like that, and you're running a broadcast place or a TV studio or some other professional type gig where you've got volunteers or people working for you who kind of know what they're doing but you want to remove the ability for something to accidentally go wrong here's a cool trick as well if you come to your streaming.xml and take a copy of that which I like to just call streaming.xml.backup then you can open your streaming.xml and get rid of everything except for the one you want to keep which is this one right at the end and you can just delete all of that so that you now only have that one service in the file and save that what happens now is that when you quit and reopen the ATM software control there is only that custom RTMP in there you could also do the same and only leave one streaming quality there if you wanted as well so this means that you can lock down the options available so that it's impossible for anybody to accidentally choose the wrong settings or something in the ATM software control or it might pick up a different default or a wrong default when it starts up. There's only one there, there's only one it can choose from. If you're using this at all and you find it interesting, please do put something down in the comments below and let me know what it is that you do with your ATM Mini and how you use it. Also, if you've got any questions or anything else you want to know about the ATM Mini and workflow, please put that into the comment section below as well. I do read them all and I get back to as many of them as I can. Also, don't forget to subscribe by clicking down here so you don't miss any new videos that I publish and also watch this video and this video which YouTube has very kindly picked out just for you, especially, especially for you because they know what you like to watch and I'll see you in another video soon.